Greetings. This is August 30th at 11 p.m. We are looking at a webcam image from a site Beto Tree and over Sheridan Lake looking west-southwest. And if we go to the Sheridan Cam on Highway 24, we see some glow in the f background. Uh, that's the street lamp that you're seeing in the foreground. And I'm not seeing a lot of smoke. That means it may be going up and over. This is an image uh, from a position on Google Earth using the KML bundle for the VIIRS infrared. And we're looking over top of the Lone Butte southeast, and we can see that fire line as it's been approaching. Highway 24 and Sheridan Lake is on your left hand side, and Green Lake is on your right hand side. So what I'm doing is looking at what are older infrareds and what are newer infrareds. And the red indication shows us where the most recent uh, fire hotspots can be starting. And they look like they're on the northeast side of each of those fire flanks. We'll come back and look at the radiated power scan to see if that confirms the data that we're seeing here, that the tendency is that it wants to move to the north and the northeast. And that's probably supported by the wind, but the wind has been shifting. But first, let's go to the NRC uh, data, how the infrared is displaying over a time period. So right now, we're looking at 24-hour, uh, 12-hour, and 6-hour updates all shown in infrared and a rough perimeter of the Elephant Hill wildfire. For the exact perimeter size, you want to keep checking the updates as they come in at the BC wildfire and the regional links below. Here we are looking at the six hour time period. What is the newest infrared that is displaying? And I'm not seeing a lot, which means that uh, the fire may have met uh, guard or it may be uh, running out of fuel in certain pockets. Let's zoom in and look at the northern flank over a period of time. Where is the fire growth on the fringes of these uh, fire flanks? What we're looking at is the fire as displayed in infrared as of 8.39 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. What we can do is take away all the older hot spots and just look at what's happened in the last 12 hour period and six hour period. And here we see there's a lot of growth, a lot of intensity, but if we take away everything that happened between six and 12 hours ago, we see there's not as much new growth. So most of the activity occurred between six and 12 hours ago. So what we're seeing here on this Google Earth KML is the fire as it would stand right now depicted in infrared and we can see the proximity and where this new growth tends to occur. The problem is these updates only happen about every two hours so and there is a lag until the one in the morning so we try to get as much information as we can and verify that with the regional data below and with uh, on the ground reports from other people. If this data is true at this point in time then uh, that firehead is approximately five kilometers from Sheridan and gradually trying to move closer by throwing out some new infrared uh, in that general direction. It's almost reached the southern shores of Jack Frost Lake and it's approximately two to three kilometers from Watch Lake. If we move further down we can see that the infrared on top of Mount Jim is generating more activity in the center and the areas north towards Nolan and Green Lake are older spots. We are continuing to see new activities southeast of Pressy and east of Pressy Lake, and that's approximately two kilometers away. And south of Green Lake, approximately four kilometers, uh, just north of Hutchinson Lake, that has a few new hotspots.
Let's move a little bit further south. We're looking at Young Lake, just right of center on your screen. And uh, to the south of Young Lake, yes, there are several new hotspots, let's say a dozen almost, as well as north of Young Lake in two separate groups, one about a kilometer away, another one about three kilometers away, a uh, total of 12 new hotspots between them and progressing north. I do see one outlier due north five kilometers from the corner of Young Lake. I'm seeing one on the ridge down to the Bonaparte River just up towards the plateau and I'm seeing three on the south slope of Mount Grant um, just 500 meters to a kilometer north of the uh, Clinton Loon Lake FSR. And this has been a very active uh, area in the past, this whole region, and these may be smoldering material that's now flared up again and showing us spots. And let's move south to uh, Hyheum, and we can see now how this time factor comes into play. We're looking at a lot of spots between 6 and 12 hours ago, indicated in orange, and we're also seeing a lot indicated over 24 hours and this can give us clues as to what direction the fire is moving where are the most recent activity occurring and does this coincide with the wind data does it also confirm the fuel and forestation that we're seeing on the ground in some of the uh, worldview and EO satellite images Let's take a look now at the radiative power scan on the VIIRS system and these are available below in the Google Earth KML and here we can see the intensity. Uh, where is the fire the hottest? Now I'm seeing a lot of activity around the Old High Hiem Road uh, running south of the lake and on the Clinton Loon Lake FSR that's coming from the eastern side. This began as one concentrated pocket uh, south of the lake and then it's kind of morphed into two and now three and maybe even four in individual pockets that keep sort of merging and then coming apart again. And directly south of the lake, uh, approximately two kilometers, is where there is a lot of intensity in a, in a, in a round circle there, a lot of green, a lot of uh, red right in the middle. The activity going on at the very south end, at the bottom of your screen, uh, around Battle Creek, and I believe that's just south of Clemmis Lake, that seems to be holding and no significant change there. Now we're going to move slightly north. We're looking around Young Lake, that's just uh, to the right of center of your screen. We can see that intensity on the south side of the lake. On the north side, there are cooler indications and they're kind of spotty all the way up to North Bonaparte Road and uh, to the southeast of Pressy Lake. I'm not seeing anything in the mid or high band of this radiative power scan. Looking at the top of the north flank, uh, I'm seeing that green yellow on the top of Mount Jim and also in the section that's extending furthest north uh, towards Jack Frost Lake. I'm also seeing one indication each on the north and south side of Little Green Lake. So if we pull back now and switch to the infrared displaying on the KML, we're getting an indication of where the new hotspots are being developed. Uh, we have a lot of 12 hour old indications, but towards the northeast fringes of these fire flanks, there are some new infrared being displayed less than six hours old. So we want to be aware of where our position is and what our escape routes are ahead of this sort of fire activity, especially when the wind has been pushing it in this direction. So let's take a look at Windy and see what direction the wind's going and what sort of velocities we're dealing with. On this model I'm seeing 14 kilometers an hour and a wind shift occurring uh, coming from the northwest and if you look from on the screen that changes to be coming from the west and then the southwest so it's kind of flowing over highway 97 and it could be coming 
any direction from the west. It's all going on a big arc over towards Little Fort. Now, a different wind model will show variation. Here we're seeing four kilometers coming from the southwest, so it will change depending on where your position is, whether it's on a plateau, valley, ridge line, and at what location you are as this wind slowly begins to turn around. It's predicted to come from the north, northwest pretty much all day tomorrow. I took a quick look at the Big Bar Cam. There was a lot of activity going on there. They may be spotlighting what's out on the plateau towards Loon Lake. Uh, it later uh, subsided, but there still uh, looks like large industrial vehicle or lighting going on there. Uh, over at the Big B Cam, it uh, does not show any haze or smoke visible in front of that lonely street light, but it is a good indication if the weather is going to shift and, and head westwards. Currently, everything's coming from the west and flowing to the east. So I hope the wind brings relief. The ideal situation would be to have the wind come from the northeast and force the fire back on itself, but it looks to swing around and maybe come from the west for a little bit. A lot of the new activity is occurring within those fire flanks as ended by this infrared, but we have to be on watch. You have to be very aware of what the bulletins and the alerts are and verify your position, know your escape routes and have your resources ready in case you've got to move. Thank you very much for watching and I'll check back as soon as possible.